Jeff, how pleased have you been with Bertolet right now and getting his opportunity to make the most of it? Yeah, uh, you know, he finished spring. I think he made the last 13. So there was a hint there that, you know, he had gotten over some of the off-season things that he had, or actually it was, it was during the season. He had one preseason surgery right before the first day we reported. So he had all 30 days off or 25 days off before the first game, the rice game, with a hernia. And then he had a hernia postseason on the other side. So, God, I never even heard of that, let alone a kicker having it, any other athlete on our team or any other program I've been in. So that was hard, I think, from a mental standpoint. And then having struggling there early and being replaced, I, th I was really proud of him. I think why he did so well this spring is because the end of the season, he didn't sulk and get down. He just kept kicking off better and better and better, five or six touchbacks in the bowl game. And he knew, his, and then he had a role and he bought into it and he did really well. Comes in the spring, does well, comes right back out and he looks great. So, um, hey, I'm, I'm in a great position, you know, to have two Division One guys that can kick the ball 60 yards at field goal depth or length, distance, kick off well, um, and both be mature and have gone through some stuff already. A game winner by Lambeau last year, and then Taylor's had his ups and downs, but certainly made big kicks also. So I'm in a great position from that standpoint. I'm in a tough position on, you know, who's going to be the best guy for the job. Um, it's probably a lot like quarterback. You know, if you try to name a guy right off the bat, then the other guy may get discouraged, uh, you know, and, and you're also kind of running with that guy. And then if he doesn't do well, it's like, oh, do we go back to this guy? So we're not going to do that. We're just going to continue to compete during fall camp. We've still got at least 15 to 18 practices before we get ready for South Carolina. And we have to do the best job we can to, to, to evaluate who's the best for the job. And even last season, we waited till midway through, the, through you know, through the, the game to make a switch, and then we waited before the next game in pregame. Um, so it's a, it's a week by week basis. And the good news is, I got two great guys, and they're going to compete. They're not none of them is going to come not ready to work, knowing that all season they're going to be in that competition. And they get along, and they both work tremendously hard. And so uh, I'm lucky in that in that regard. What's Bertolette done technically, mechanically to improve on his trouble? God, last spring he was very consistent. Not this one, but the year before, leading up to last season. But he had that injury, and it gave him off for two months, and he just was a little bit rusty coming out of that first game. And he's really continued that, what he did well last spring, because he had a great spring two springs ago. Then he had that injury and that surgery, and then he came back late, and then I think it kind of overwhelmed him a tad when he didn't have success right, you know, in one kick. And so then it was like, oh, no, what is it? What's going on? And what he's done now is just go right back to where he was before. He's smooth to the ball. Um, he's missing very few kicks. And when he is missing, it's from it's very few left or right yards away. So um, God, I think he's got all the talent in the world. I think the more he's confident in himself, uh, the more he makes that first field goal uh, in each game, the more you know he's got a chance to be successful. How hard can that be for a punter or kicker where they have limited in-game opportunities and to overcome that and battle back? Uh, you're right. That's exactly right. You don't know until that situation presents itself. We do the best we can to mimic that out there in situation. We did a mayday field goal or last second game winning field goal the other day and he made both of them and when Josh gets back they'll compete and like each one of them would have got one opportunity you try without Kyle Field right now it's even harder because usually we walk in there at least there's like you know five to ten thousand fans and it does feel that way again and so hey this season's different we have an unbelievable facility being built we're not gonna be able to get in there very much but we'll do the best we can in the practice field we gotta go with our gut on who's done the best over a 30-day span then week by week we'll just continue to evaluate and like I said I, they're both very mature It'd be different if one was a freshman one was a senior then you could have some animosity or you could have you know some confidence issues but both guys if they miss one it's not gonna be the end of the world they'll bounce back and make the next one you talked about kicking but when you add the return game in how impactful can this special teams unit as a group be this season yeah I hope I, I hope we're working hard God, I, there's a few things we weren't as good as I would have liked to have been. We're a little disappointed last season in, in a couple in a couple phases, some being the return game, really punt return, kick return. I would have thought we would have been better, but we didn't do a good enough job as a group, including myself. But we've looked at some things. We've added some, we've injected some youth in some of the return positions from Speedy Knoll to, you know, uh, Jamal Jeffrey, Nick Harvey, some of those guys competing with some of the veterans like Trey Williams, um, LaQuiviante. 
uh, Devontae Harris. So I love that part of it. We have competition built in that returner, in the returner spot. That's what drives it. And then, like what happened at Mississippi State, as soon as you break one where Trey broke down the sideline, then those guys in front of him start gaining confidence. The problem was that was late in the season. We got to do it early. And we're playing a very good team in South Carolina around the gate that has great speed and that sort of thing. But we got to improve in that area. And we're certainly going to do everything we can right now to get that done. And our core group of guys that aren't going to be written in the press guide of who's blocking this guy and who's blocking that guy is much deeper than it was the year before. I can't find a freshman that can't play for us on special teams in some regard. Obviously, we'll look at how they impact each position at wide receiver, DB, linebacker, because that's mostly who we use. And then we'll figure out if that makes the most sense. But I got a collection of guys underneath our vets that, that I think have some potential. Some of the physical tools that Speedy brings to the table, what excites you about a possibility of him being in that mix back there? The first thing is that he was here last spring. And so it's not new to him right now. He's caught a ton of punts. He was a multi-positional player at Edna Carr. And so you didn't really get to always see him do that, that phase because he was a quarterback and all that. Uh, we've seen him do it a ton. He's practiced it a ton. I think he catches 20 or 30 a day. And we'll really lock it down with him coming into the game weeks here in about 10 days we'll, when we settle our depth chart and special teams. We'll really work with just him um, and the other guys, obviously, that are in the two deep. But he's electric. He can make you miss, but yet he's 150, 195 pounds to 200 pounds, and people are going to bounce off him. And he's got that vision that sometimes you can't teach. So we get the ball security things you know, caught up for this conference and this level of play he's going to have first game. I think he's going to have a bright future in the return game. You're saying he's going to be the starter? Probably. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, every day's a competition. I mean, you go out there and you drop some punts, and I would probably would say, uh-oh, maybe he's not. But no, I, I would anticipate he will con consistently do what he's been doing. We're going to have evaluations every probably five days as we scrimmage. We'll punt the ball down there and touch off as live as we can. That will give us a better feel. But in the spring, he did a really nice job. We've got some veterans like Devontae. Quibbs worked extremely hard. And those two young guys, I said, Jamal and Nick Harvey, both at some point in an Aggie uniform are going to do something in the return game. What about the uprights, the rugby uprights? <coughs> How much of a difference did that make in your two plays? Uh, yeah, it's an accuracy thing. And that was something we talked about, was getting, getting more accurate from a field goal standpoint. We didn't try as many field goals. The opportunities either didn't present themselves as much as usual, seeing that we only attempted about 13 of them, um, and or we opted to let Johnny go for it on fourth down or fake it against Auburn, different different scenarios, a penalty against us or against them. We, we kept it, we took it down. So there's just these weird deals. But in a season like this, um, anything could present itself and three points could be major. And so that's the part that we're looking at is if we attempt 20 or 25, how accurate can we be? Because we need to be above 80% at least and then be 100% on our PAT. So that was the focus was make it easier, make it harder in practice than it is in the games.